I see why the rock has the guitars. He's Maori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Damn, the rock going off, bro. God damn. I need to stop trying to figure out this character in the middle of a fight, too. Catching on, bitch. <laughs> Legendary. Okay, I'm starting to get this cannon thing down. It's weird. Check this out. You about to go, uh, you're a mutant. You just woke up and, uh, decided that you want to go, uh, tired of hiding from the world. You've already known about your powers and you've been practicing with them. You decide you want to go and join either the, uh, X-Men or the Brotherhood. What four powers do you want that you give you a mutant character and, uh, who are you joining? You said the X-Men or the Brotherhood? Yeah. Or would you join one of the underground and fight uh, the Morlocks? Probably the, the Morlocks. Uh, in a way. i tell you why. They're too... Um, Professor Xavier's all, uh, awesome. His causes but and everything. But uh, I feel this too righteous. I don't want to be too direct like that. You know what I'm saying? And, but uh, I would choose with them later in life. If I was a if I was a teenager, I would definitely go with the Brotherhood just because I was confused about life. But uh, I say my powers. Oh, I'm just gonna go with one of my characters I wrote about. Probably just like a the build ability to grow plants really fast, and I have this dermal armor that uh protects me when I'm in like real bad situations. How about you? Would you would you be your own uh, character or would you be related to anybody? Like would you be related to any of the celestials or anything? Nah, I wouldn't want to be that strong. I just want to be the regular uh <laughs> I say two This is Marvel, you sure? Look <laughs> I'm just saying I just saying in particular like uh if I had to just have a basic character. I thought you meant like a regular mutant. 
Well, I was thinking. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah, no, you don't have to hold back. Look, they got a kid. They got a twelve-year-old who can create pocket dimension. But see, like with, with Namazu, <laughs> with my character Namazu, the plant guy. Oh, um, he actually has a lot of abilities. Like with his plants, he can create like almost like familiars, like these hybrid carnivorous creatures that follow. Cause mostly he's sneaky. He hides in the trees and he like makes a bow out of his armor and shoots with it. Yeah. So like most times, you know how like a I try to make him like a cool shaman. You know like a, a Diablo where you have all these summons where they're helping you while you're walking through the woods and stuff. Yeah. I I try to make it like if he has to, he can have a whole bunch of these like pound like plant creatures on the ground while he's sitting there shooting. So, so mostly he's, the other people in the crew are usually like fighters while he's in the background like helping them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're like, not necessarily strong, but, my bad. No, you good, you good, yeah. And I say like, realistically bro, like I say, I know martial arts and everything, but if we had to fight super beings, radioactive beings, super power beings, different shit like that, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make stuff to distract that bastard while I'm taking them down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. And I feel like if you're on your own, it's hard to be really acute to everything around you. So like, if I had minions, like some kind of plant thing, sense in motion or something, uh, yeah. you can kind of keep up with somebody trying to sneak up on your ass. I'm sh but I'm sure super speed would kill the fuck out of my character because he really he, he can't shoot something that's super moving really fast. I'm sure plant tendrils can help only so far. <laughs> and I think my weakness would be fire, so that's easy. You know what I'm saying? I um. You know, well, it's, uh, not go all the war with some of my characters. <laughs> I uh, would uh, make a character. Um, well, for starters, one of my abilities would be able to turn uh, in the smoke. Um, I would. Uh, I've always loved uh, teleportation and uh, the ability to appear. Definitely. Um, I would, uh, so I'd have to, uh, be, if I could turn in, uh, to smoke and, uh, have the ability to appear, my other power, um, would be, uh, somewhat similar to, uh, the pistol, actually. Your name, control your, your name would be, like, Dr. Pistol. Charisma. <laughs> huh? Your name would be, like, Dr. Charisma. <laughs> nah, nah, I'd, uh, it's somewhat similar to the pistol, actually. I'd control my own domain. Hey. Like, I'd have a house out in the middle of nowhere, and I'd control my own vicinity, everything in my own vicinity, meaning that nobody would be able to enter my house and take control of me, take control of my powers, nor use their powers without my So you make an astral box, which is your, almost like a dream realm in your mind that nobody can really... Like, if Freddy Cougar came in that bitch, you would fuck him up, while the rest of the team, we're all almost dying. And you go, nah. <laughs> Come here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, like Freddy would have no power in my area, even going to sleep. He wouldn't even going to sleep. He wouldn't have any power in my so, house at all. So question. Um, say I give an example. I, I'm writing about a part in one of my things, uh, my stories right now, where um they went some of my characters went in this temple. And like as they go in the temple, all these ancient ancient warriors from the tombs awaken uh, because of one of the medallions they have. Like, one of the characters had this, like, uh, ancient medallion that, you know, uh, I say it, it's sensory picks up on supernatural, you know what I'm saying? But it can, it can work in the wrong way too. So they go in there. So with your character, if you were one of those characters going in there, could you blanket like, how would your powers work? Could you blanket that that medallion spell, like, with the 
with the if the monsters were to come alive, how would you defeat them? Like, would you would it always have to be a house or? You kind of cut in and out. So oh, wait, are you saying like they would be like medallion? They would be using the medallion walking in his vicinity, or he most, would be most, outside of his. Most time, it, it's a sensory thing, uh, it, but it awakens sometimes dark things too because you know they they slay, they have to slay dark beings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm saying with you, if your character was in with the other characters, how would your if the undead started to come alive and stuff like that, how would your powers affect our environment? Is it like you create like a hundred, a hundred square foot area and it's controlled by you mentally, kind of, kind of like a psychic, or is it? Uh... Um, you oh, so you asking like how far would his power stretch? Yeah, how how would it work in a in a dire situation? Um, well, I figured I'd start off with, uh, uh, effect a little, I, I want to say a little bit bigger than a football field and then it starts to grow over time. Gotcha. Yeah. I, like I said, I got them staying out in the, in the house, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Hurt. A uh, so, wooded part of Georgia. So this character, he's more of just a, an informant and then maybe he has people that live around him because you're a safe haven, maybe? Nah, uh, stays out in the uh, house in the land by himself. Gotcha. That'd be cool. I was just saying, see, that could be a, th a new like, interest. Some mutant finds you, and you be they were like, we need your power. And you're like, I don't want to help anybody. We need your power. And then more, <laughs> more keep coming, and it could be like a bad group, and you have to move or something. So, yeah. So what's your, Meta, um, what's your barrier? Does it, it, does it take time to get to that? Do you have to, like, meditate, and it makes, like, this current throughout everything? You know what I'm saying? Well, over the uh, over the years, uh, his um, mother was a sorceress, and um, ah, his okay. grandmother uh, was a uh, uh, grand sorceress. Uh, I want to say uh, grandmother got upgraded to an angel um, by the Celestials, uh, doing one of the Celestials a favor at some point, and uh, I want to say it's a mixture between his mother's magic, his grandmother's magic, and his own uh, outside of him practicing. Um, so so your, your power is almost like an Atlas power. Um, not really saying that it's grounded, but you can have super strength or super speed. It don't matter as long as you're in your area. Yeah, and yeah, inside that, yeah, inside that, inside his vicinity, yeah, outside his vicinity, he would uh, just have the uh, the uh, ability to appear anywhere. Uh, he could turn into smoke. Um, he can do anything, yeah. For you. I would have to, I would have to give him uh, Three, two, some random stuff one, like. Uh, so what if, what if, kind of like with your power, because it it would actually happen probably if somebody came to attack you you know like that i said that little threat of a, some new group of mutants trying to get you in that group talking about protect us when they come you can be almost like mimicking their powers because it's an idea of what you see you know what i'm saying so that's another yeah. power too and i would think you being like pretty much i like, like pretty much like I said, they just like Mephisto, so pretty much I guess my character would be like a mini god on some level in his own vicinity. Definitely. I mean it makes sense. But uh what what you'd be the god of what, like, if you had to be Oh, if I had to if I had to name it I guess. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I mean, as far as giving him a title, huh? Oh. I would think any ancient would have like two names, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, a word for it. Um, I guess, uh, God of uh, Independence. Hurt. I guess that would deal with it, would deal with independence on, on some level.
Yeah, outside the field, I'd have to give them the ability like a larger way of, like a good range of uh, magic. Memorize the uh, magic spells. Ooh, I used to create a lot of group characters growing up, but I, uh, yeah, that's off. Started using some of them as like security on some level because it's too many stories. It's using brute characters and trying to easily disprove some of their fights, like all the things they do and so forth. Definitely. And you know what, too? Like I, I said, when we were younger, I whole think idea of a superhero was like strength anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because we were small. When we get older, we're like, nah, bro. I want to throw shit with my mind. Or I want to teleport. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, the one boot character I did make, uh, uh, what was it, I, well I made a uh, few, but one of them I, I made a werebear, nice. gave him like this super, um, what is it, roar I guess you could say, somewhat uh, similar to Black Bolt, uh, be able to disintegrate anything he is, uh, what was that? Oh man, like a Sonic Yell or Dragon Ball yeah. kind of yell. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy power. Disintegrating? Whew. Oh yeah. Yeah, Black Bolt is. Uh, Black Bolt can whisper. It says a lot because in Marvel, he's one of my favorite mutants. Black Bolt can literally whisper and disintegrate. Marvel. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew about Black Bolt. I was just saying, like, dude, imagine fighting something, then he just screams out, he like yells out nowhere, and you're gone. Oh man, yeah, that would be hilarious. Which is, I mean, which is funny actually, because when I told my brother about it, he was like, seriously, like it's kind of OP considering how strong werebears are normally in the story. That's what I, I mean, up, bro. They said, that's why they're never used. That's how I feel. I'm like, yeah, because they're strong as shit. <laughs> <laughs> But I can understand if you, uh, but if you think about it, if you're fighting like godlike beings, I mean, it's about right. You know what I'm saying? If like you're some ancient creature that's used to fighting uh, inter interplanetary creatures that came trying to invade Earth and you're some of the last of what's yeah. left, I mean, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. in a way, it can't, it's all in who you're fighting. All in your caliber. Yeah, because I gave us some decent enemies. Like, we're going to be fighting some were dinosaurs, some dudes that can turn into a uh, somewhat, uh, I guess, uh, strong. So, with, like with her, half hybrid were T Rex. So, with her screams, working on the design. with her screams, like, if she screams at them, they, it damages them really bad, though. It don't, like, necessarily kill them, right? Who? No, I'm talking about the scream of your character. Like her enemies. Oh, know. the werebear is yeah. a he. Okay. Um, uh, he uh, no, he can. Uh, I had that. I had only given him that one level. Uh, that one level of straight annihilation. Because I thought about it at first. I was gonna do like a level one, like he roars and then like stuns him and then like level two and like he roars and knocks him back. But, yeah, for some reason I didn't feel the need to hold back on him. Huh. I mean, that's pretty cool though, because think about it, and then he's pretty much. Anybody try to hit him with a baseball bat, not hurt him. Uh, you hit him with a sword, it's probably not gonna go through his fur. Like, realistically. <laughs> Oh yeah, because I kind of kept going with it too, because I was in the uh, Dungeons and Dragons mind frame when I did it. Oh yeah, no, that was one of my favorite games. So I, he has a dire, a uh, dire form too. That gave him a dire werebear. That's cool that you drew it. That's, yeah, that's one of my favorite classes too. Because I mean, like Beast Boy is one of my favorite, but I feel like he, in that form he wasn't like how I would do it. Yeah, but he's awesome. I, he's one of my favorites too. Nightcrawler, Beast Boy, um, I say... Oh, Nightcrawler is one of the ones that ends up being kind of OP in the future. Oh, yeah. Because he learned, uh, he, uh, practices, he learns an ability, uh, where he can, uh, teleport specific body parts of him. They don't have to bother really fighting people. Which says a lot, because he's already, like, an incredible martial artist and, like, an uh, expert swordsman. 
He he used to fight with uh, with scimitars, didn't he? Huh? He fought with scimitars and rapiers, right? Yeah. Yeah, fighting somebody like him would be hilarious because he's another one uh, people be forgetting about. You can put him up against Superman. He can teleport and about to teleport his head away and it'd be over with. And throw, <laughs> yeah, throw him in a trap. He teleport through the cops, uh, the police academy, then pop up in the gun room and get a grenade and teleport. Superman's like, what the fuck? <laughs> he looks behind him like the grenade's tied to his cape. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> Mom, did the Superman just cuss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, I don't know. I would join, um, I want to say I would join the X Men, but I. Because of my mind frame, I'd be like Wolverine. I'd probably be rogue for a while before I did. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I'd probably do a bit of jumping around on some level. I feel you. Um, cause see, there were two, and you had to definitely listen to Professor. See, I'm sure there's a dark side to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's some stuff that if you didn't listen, they would possibly do something to you. That's why they, they switched sides so much. Some um, X-Men switched sides to the Brotherhood because there really was no choice possible. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, I wouldn't join. I'd jump back and forth between the X Men and the Morlocks. That was no lie. Yeah, the Morlocks seem more my taste. You know what I'm saying? When we see some shit about to go down, that's when we step forward. But all that extra, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hurt. I feel you on that one. And they don't want to be around fake people. That's why they need to stay below. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, with the Brotherhood, I ain't gonna lie, if I join the Brotherhood, I don't really, I've never really liked Magneto. I'd end up killing him. Um, <laughs> I'd end up killing him. Uh, uh, Scarlet Witch and Mystique, then Cheeks is getting clapped. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Quicksilver is one of my favorite mutants, but his personality in the story, I'd slap him, because I don't like people that, oh. uh, Act the way that he do he is a bit of a like he can be a good character, but he has a bit of a cocky personality. I don't like cocky people. You said who? So I didn't know Quicksilver. Oh yeah, I feel you. Too cocky. Yeah, he no, can he's be a that bit prep. Of an asshole. Yeah, he's that got that prep attitude. Yeah, because of his uh, because of how fast he is and his intelligence using his ability, he uh, yeah he. On some level, has a right to be cocky, but I don't like cocky characters. Yeah, I didn't look killing him too. That's why I say, see, let me have some magic abilities. That way I can play around with some other shit. Like, uh, I can use my smoke and turn into a damn. Uh, uh, manipulate shadows and you can do co copies of yourself too to throw people off yeah or get inside people's head create nightmares I'm getting good with Core, bro. I, well, he's a control character.
Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get a skin for Core. I think he deserves it. I'll probably get more hype with his ass. That was beautiful. Good shit, good shit. 